is Snoop Dogg, and he is here in studio on The Rich Eisen Show, here in person. Great to see you, Snoop. Always a pleasure. It's a pleasure having you on this program. All right, let's, let's get into the uh, Steelers right, right here and right now. Why, how did you become a Pittsburgh Steeler fan again here? Mm, in the 70s, as a kid, you know, watching that commercial with me and Joe Green, watching the Steelers just dominate football, Mel Blunt, me and Joe Green, Bradshaw, I mean, on and on, just the, the, the great players and the way they played the game. You know, I was a little kid playing football, and I just wanted to be a Steeler. I just loved the way that they played, and I grew up loving them. And as I became older, I fell more in love with them and got a chance to meet some of the players and go to the games and become really, you know, affiliated with the Steelers organization to where it became like, you know, I'm a part of them. So Rams, Raiders didn't appeal to you at any point in time? Well, the Rams or? and Raiders were always appealing because they were always you know, in L.A., but right. it's just something about the way the Steelers played. The Raiders got close, you know, because they had that, that attitude. Oh, yeah. They had that attitude, but it was just something about that black and gold that really won me over. Yeah, I know. Cube is uh, as, as Raiders hard. as they come. Die hard. I know. I mean, and, and he's he's on his hands and knees hoping they come back here. And they say the same stuff every year. We're going to be all right. We're going to make the playoffs this year. <laughs> they may be all right this year. Derek Carr, all right. Right. But your Steelers, it looks like right now... In this league where we always talk about quarterback-receiver combinations, right? Aaron Rodgers, Jordy Nelson, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, when Stafford and Calvin are hooking up, mm -hmm. and Carson and Larry Fitzgerald. We can go on and on. Romo and Dez, who are unfortunately out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Looks like you've got the best right now. We do. It uh, really big does. Big B and the AB. That's a 784 connection. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Believe that. Believe it. And I like Le'Veon Bell as, as a receiver as well, too. And we get him back, so... It should be fun for us to see what Ben does with all, with all those weapons. And me and Todd Haley got an understanding now. That, uh, <laughs> Todd know how to run that offense now. He don't want me talking about him on Instagram. So, Todd, we all right now. <laughs> talking about him is one way to put it, of what you did on Instagram. I mean, Last I'm just year, a diehard. Right come on, man, I'm a fan, Rich. So, I mean, I voiced my opinion. I felt like he wasn't putting the right plays out there. Then he got it. When he got the message, it started clicking. Ben started throwing touchdowns, and yeah. the offense was flowing. Did you have, did you have a conversation with Haley? No, like I mean, we was the telek telekinesis. <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> he feels you. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Because well, it does seem, though, you know, that this, this is the most, clearly, there's no doubt about it, that's the side of the football that the identity for the Steelers comes from, yes. which is very difficult for old school folks like yeah. yourself to handle. Yeah, we, we're a defensive organization, but now we're, you know, Dick LeBeau is gone. So now we have to lean more on our offense. But I like our youngsters on defense. I really do. I like Bud Dupree. I like Tewitt. I like all of the youngsters that we got out there because I feel like they hungry. They don't know what it feels like to win, so mm -hmm. they got a lot to prove. So I think we're going to be all right. Well, at the Combine this year, when we were looking at Bud Dupree and we looked at his height, weight, all the measurables, and we had, like, this computer system that we, we would plug the, the numbers in and out would pop people who have the same build, same everything. Willie McGinnis was Bud Dupree. What? Yes. Willie. Well, he, he's built like a Hall of Famer there. McGinnis. Guy from you know That's from back in... That's my partner, man. We I played know. football from 1979 on up. That's right. So, I mean... Obviously, there's a long way to go before he is actually but, 55. But, you got something in your jeans, man. If they popped you out like Willie Mack, man, let's did. get it. So, when you, were you strolling around the high school corridors with Willie McGinnis? Is that what yeah, you Yeah, Willie was, uh, we the same age, but he was one grade younger than me. He okay. started school late, I guess because his, his birthday was late or whatnot. But right. uh, me and Mack have been friends for a long time, from elementary, junior high school, right. all the way up, because we played Little League football together. So, when we got to high school, it was like we was more or less class clowns. We had a lot of fun. Willie McGinnis was a class clown? A lot of fun. What Willie Mac he... is a Look, fun guy. I know that, but I mean, class clown, you know. Well, I don't mean like clowning in class. I mean, okay. just like we were, were, were like the center of attention because we were always like the life of the party. Right. So even in class or out of class, at games, after games, it was always exciting to be around us because that's the energy that we brought. Do you, you think he should have a gold jacket one day? No he day. deserves a gold jacket. Willie Mack was one of the greatest linebackers to ever play that position. I felt like... Peyton Manning would have never won a Super Bowl if Willie Mack would have stayed in New England because that was his nemesis. He was always finding a way to... Andrew and James on the one-yard line, he stopped him in the snow. I'm watching all these plays where Mack and that defense was mm -hmm. the heartbeat of the Patriots, and it stopped Peyton Manning from getting over the hump. Mm -hmm. When they got rid of Mack and started shipping people out of there, Manning got him one. Snoop here on the Rich Eisen Show in studio. Who do you think's the best team in the league right now? Best team in the league right now? Just two weeks in. I've got my choice who I think is just the most complete team 
I know it's just one eighth of the season. Clearly, I understand it's early, but what do you think the team? I like the Jets. You do. I'm not even on front. I like the that defense is nasty. It is. That's where it starts. But their quarterback is. Fitzpatrick can get it done. Okay. He basic. Just. Throw the ball. But he throws it in windows he has no business throwing it into, Snoop. He has no conscience. They 2 0 right now. For a guy who went to Harvard, sometimes you're wondering what's he hey, thinking. He got a lot of hair up on his chin. He may need to cut okay. that off and get a new look. Right. So you like the Jets? I like them right now. If you say who's the best team in football, I'm huh. looking at what they have, and they're going to be in that AFC East where they're going to have to play the Dolphins, the Bills, and the Patriots twice. Mm, right. So we'll really know what to do once right. they come up out of their division. Right. Uh, the team that I th I've seen out there that I, I think is the most complete is the Cardinals. I like the Arizona Cardinals right now. You know, mm. the defense, Carson. Is he going to stay up? That is obviously the ultimate question because we saw what happened last year when he could not. But right now with him staying up, he has as many touchdowns as Brady. Yeah, yeah. I like this kid Johnson Ooh, out of Northern Iowa. I he do is too. I big, do too. and I think they Bruce, don't use him enough. Well, I think Bruce Arians knows what what he's what to do with him eventually. I like him a lot. Yeah, they won't tackle him. He's a big guy. Yeah, but as Dion calls business decisions. Yeah, you don't want you that. Make, you make a business decision. He likes a lacy him. or a blunt. You right. don't want that. How fa How so? How far do you think your Tomlin can take your Steelers? How far do you think that he can do that? We got to get Pouncey back. Mm -hmm. That's the key right there because he's the center, the epicenter of what's going on. But I love Mike Tomlin's coaching, you know, strategy. I love how he coaches. I love his intensity, and I love the way he attacks the game. I think he could take us to the Super Bowl again. What a victory. Mm -hmm. Well, we had Antonio Brown on this show last week, and he says that Tomlin is like a father figure and, I'm, and how he helps him grow as a man. And I asked him, what did he, what did he mean by what, Give me an example. And he said basically just... That morning, he had called him in the office, just said, what's going on? Just what's going on in your life? Do you do that with your kids for youth? Your All youth the time. League? We check on our kids to make sure they're doing good in school, out of school, personality-wise, with their family, with adults. It's more about us being life coaches as opposed to football coaches because we're more concerned with their life. And football is just a tool to get us closer to them. Mm -hmm. And so... What happens if a kid's got a problem at home or something like that? What well, we're you... dealing with problems right now with certain kids on the team who have, you know, their grades may not be bad, but they're having certain, you know, disciplinary, you know, issues or respecting elders. So instead of the parent, you know, physically doing something to them, they turn them over to us and we find ways to, you know, discipline them through football, whether it's like you don't get no playing time or, you know, things that we take away from them to help them understand that there's consequences in life. And we work with the parents to make sure that we really involved in their lives on and off the field. Yeah, I'm here with Snoop uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. The Snoop Youth Football League. Get more details at snoopyfl.net. Uh, this uh, uh, league founded by you back in the fall of 2005. So you're in your 10th season now. Your, yeah. your 10th year, 11th season coaching yes, youth football. Yes, what, I'd love to get you some thoughts on, uh, you saw Jim McElwain, the coach of Florida, yeah. a couple weeks ago, got in some hot water because he yeah. went right up in the face of Fred Taylor's kid about what happened, and a lot of people thought that was too much. Where do you stand on, on disciplining, as you just mentioned, kids and getting in their face well, in I that have, regard? Well, I have certain coaches who are disciplinaries, mm -hmm. and then I'm the coach that's like the pickup. Mm -hmm. I'm the pickup. If the coach puts them down or criticizes them, I come and I pick them up. So it has to be a good cop, bad cop. Mm -hmm. And I've never been the coach that screams at them or pull them by their jersey, but I have coaches who do that. And that is necessary in mm -hmm. football because that this is a physical sport, and sometimes to get your point across, mm -hmm. that's what's necessary. But I do believe that teaching sometimes is more vocal than physical. So you can teach without being physical. Mm -hmm. And so do you think when you're in the face of a kid that there is a line that, that, that should not be crossed or there's an old-school mentality for you that's just like, hey, this is the way it is? And As a coach, yes. me personally... You have to know what kid you're dealing with. Some kids can can accept that, mm -hmm. and they'll toughen up and they'll take it. And some kids will bottle up from that mm -hmm. because they may be getting that at home as well. So you have to understand what kind of kid you're coaching, and what's the the philosophy of coaching that you're using on them. What's your technique? Because every kid is different. Right. You see what's going on in San Antonio, right? With the the coach. Who, yeah. The coach apparently just resigned yeah, after telling kids. the kids to go out and, and hit the coach, uh, hit the ref, based on what they allege may have been racial slurs said by the, the official and or... Unexcusable. No, no matter what, that's inexcusable. Uh, I'm just glad that the kids were able to find the right blame because for the kids to take the blame was bad in the beginning because the coach should have stepped up and been a real man from the beginning and said what he did. 
But at the end of the day, you got to look at it and say, well, football is a physical sport, and the kids out there, they're, they're told what to do. They're coached what to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't believe those kids just woke up and said, we're going to hit the refs. The coach told them to do it, and they did what the coach said, and the coach should be disciplined, and the kids should be disciplined at the same time. It's a learning lesson for everybody. There's some things you have to know common sense-wise that my coach is telling me to do something wrong, and I'm not going to do it. Do you think those kids should be allowed to play football again? Definitely. Definitely, because they were only doing what kids their age are supposed to do, follow the coach's instructions. Despite it being a bad decision, a lot of coaches make bad decisions. Coaches in the NFL make bad decisions all the time. It's just a matter of giving the kids a chance to, to repent and know that they were wrong and they won't do it again. I don't feel like they did it on their own, so they should be given a chance. Snoopy, uh, pardon me, snoopyfl.net is the way that you can go find out more information. Snoopyfl.net on the Snoop Youth Football League. Do you tell your kids, though, that maybe sometimes if you... You see, how, but how can you prepare, I guess is the way I want to ask this question. How can you prepare those two kids or any kids that might, for whatever reason, be put in that situation where a coach asks them to do something out of bounds from football? How do you prepare kids to handle a situation like that in real time? That's tough. Move, that's real right? tough because that's one of those, it happens on the spot. It's audible. It's right now. So my suggestion would be to, you know, kids who have enough common sense to know right from wrong the way your parents brought you up. If your coach is trying to put you in a position to where you feel like it's jeopardizing what you were taught, step back and go against your coach. Because at the end of the day, you got to live with that. And if you feel like it's right, don't do it. If you feel like you, you know, it's not something that you want to do, be strong enough to say, coach, I'm not going to do that. And just take the discipline from the coach as opposed to what these kids are going through right now. Snoop Dogg on Twitter, at Snoop Dogg, here on The Rich Eisen Show. We'll take a break. Back in a minute, we'll take a couple phone calls. Would you mind? Yes, sir. 844-204-RICH is the number to dial if you want to talk to Snoop. We're back in one minute's time here on The Rich Eisen Show. I'm the big chief, the grim reaper. Maybe that bring me back yellow like still a logo in the bag. Welcome back. <laughs> Snoop Dogg here in studio. And um, it's remarkable how much money Straight Outta Compton oh, wow. has made. And you do know that. <laughs> A type of movie, uh, uh, box office at superhero movies. Yeah. Usually it's only reserved for them. Or, you know, well, they Jurassic. Were, NWA were superheroes, if you really want to be real. They were the first black superheroes, the first ghetto superheroes, if you really want to be real. So it's appropriate for them to do those kind of numbers, you know what I'm saying? Because it's a great movie. It's, uh, and, and I'd like to turn it over to my phone lines for uh, a regular listener of this program who wants to hit you up about that. Uh, Jeff in Detroit calls in quite frequently on this program, and Jeff, I am hooking you up with Snoop. Jeff? Uh, dreams do come true. And to Snoop from Detroit, I must say, what up, though? Uh, yes, sir. We up. We're spending all this money <laughs> hey, on Maria. <laughs> hey, I'd like to just thank you, man. Once you were here with a uh, little badass at the Masonic Temple, you did yeah. a concert, and you stayed behind and shook everybody's hand, man. That was, that was real. One right there. Appreciate it. Hey, listen, I, uh, I had a question for you. As far as Straight Outta Compton goes, uh, how did you like your portrayal in the movie? And your uh, your opinion of the movie overall. And number two, has Ice Cube contacted you about maybe being in The Last Friday? Because it's rumored that The Last Friday is going to be out here. And I mean, what would be better than, than my man Snoop D-O-double-G off, uh, you know, with, with, with that cast on The Last Friday, man? What up, though? What's going on with it? Well, I haven't got a call from Cube about uh, Friday, but I'm pretty sure I will because, uh, you know, that's my partner and I've always wanted to be down with the movie, so hopefully we'll make that happen. Um, and the Straight Outta Compton movie, I was very impressed with it. I loved it. I thought it was an Academy Award, you know, nomination deserving. Um, my character, I love the demeanor of the, of the guy that played me. Uh, it's hard to look like me and to sound like me, but I loved his demeanor, and I love the fact that they even mentioned me and put me in the movie. It made me feel good about what I've done and what I'm doing. Is there, uh, because there's rumors that there's a might be a movie about you and Tupac, similar to something like that, about mm. biopic in that regard? Those, not not uh, really, no. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this movie, letting the NWA movie, okay. you know, live on and on and on. When Snoop Dogg is done with it and having fun with it, mm -hmm. then I do my movie right now. I'm still on it like I want it. I love it. Uh, let's go back to the phone lines right now. Nick in Albany, Georgia, you are on The Rich Eisen Show with Snoop. Hey, what's up, Stu? What up, Doc? Hey, not much, man. Uh, I was calling to figure out what you thought about uh, the Raiders and um, David Carr 
maybe ask you if you do a quick freestyle on it. And uh, do you think Two Live Crew deserves their own movie? All right, Nick, thanks for calling. Hey, Slick Nick, I like the comment. Um, I thought his name was Derek Carr. It is. It is. I, you know how many times I've made that mistake on live television? So David Carr is his brother. Yes, he's right, yeah. I okay, just, well... It's Derek, though. Okay, yeah. D, D, it happens. What'd you say, D-Car? D-Car. What do you think of D-Car? D-Car is all right. He's the best thing going in Oakland in a long time at that quarterback position since I've seen uh, number 12. Who was number 12? That took Gannon? him to the Super Bowl. I liked it, him. Mm -hmm. He was hard. He, he got a lot, lot, lot of spirit behind him, and I like Cooper. I like Cooper. What was with Pac-Man doing that with his head? Pac-Man a fool, man. That's my nephew. I'm a hotline. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like, too, is Latavius Murray. Oh, wow. He is he, big. He's the business. That's another business decision you got to make. Is he related to DeMarco Murray? I don't believe so. No, I don't believe he's so. He's nasty. He is. I like What him. do you think is going on with Chip Kelly in that scheme in Philadelphia, Ch DeMarco? He got rid of too many people that fit the scheme. You can't get rid of Macklin, D-Jack, Shady. Like, these are people who fit your system. Like, they were... They were handmade for your system. They yeah. were they were the answer. Like, you could put up 40... Now it's like the guys out there right now, no disrespect, they just don't fit the system. Like, DeMarco Murray should be with a line that is about running, mm -hmm. not all that fast stuff, because he need blocking, and Dallas was the perfect match for him. Sometimes it makes... I feel watching them that the tempo is more important than anything else. That That's if bad. they go fast, they're going to have matchup problems created for the defense and that they are well-conditioned. By the fourth quarter, they're going to end up steamrolling people. That tempo is no. just as important as the scheme. What I'm him. saying is the tempo is three plays and out faster than a normal three plays and out. Mm -hmm. Like a normal offense, it may take a minute and a half, two minutes to get these three plays out if you stop them on three and out. They offense, 25 seconds, three plays and out. So they didn't even have a chance to even examine yeah. what's going on and, on the field. And the defense is back out there. Tired, mad. Yeah, suck and win. Potentially. I mean, SnoopYFL.net is how you can get involved in the Snoop, Snoop Youth Football League. Again, now in its uh, 11th season, uh, 10 years ago, created this very fall. Uh, over 1,300 kids in the Los Angeles area participating, including Ronnie Hillman, yes, who's sir. R r rushing the rock right now. Yes, sir. And it looks like he's, well, I mean, he's just two games in. But he and C.J. Anderson are, are splitting carries. But Hillman looks a little bit more effective I right think, now. I think, I think, Peyton Manning took him around that tool shed and gave him that one-on-one -on -one and told him, check this out. You're going to have to block, first of all. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> you're going to have to step up in that hole and give me some protection. I need that when you're out here. Then when you get the ball, you got to hit it. So I feel like he's really learning and he's really growing. And that's what you want to see as a football player. You want to see him grow. You don't want to see him stop. You want to see him grow. And he's growing. That's why he's on the football field getting time. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, you, you and I spoke about it off 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 air. That first order business running the ball in a number eighteen led offense. You better block. Pass protection. First of all. A. You don't get on the field if you don't know. <laughs> You're a blocker first. Yes. And then you can run it. Hello. Yes. Because I'm getting up there in age. I can't really, <laughs> I can't really do what I used to do. Oh, that's been an also. Uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on that too. Is that here comes Gary Kubiak with a system that mm. may not fit. It's slowing him down. He's getting hit a lot. I'm not used to seeing Peyton get hit that much right. in two games. He's been hit an awful lot. Or he's been pressured. It's been in his face. And it's, he had to make decisions to get rid of the ball because it's coming so fast. Right. And they, maybe, you know, they should loosen the reins for a, a someone vet. like... <laughs> a vet who knows more than probably you. You would think so. <laughs> I know. You would think so. And that's something it's that... It's egos, though. Come on, Rich. It's egos. And see, when you're dealing with somebody like Peyton, you have to sometimes say, you know what? What do you think, Peyton? Not what I... What do you think? Because you actually out there, you know, doing it. Mm -hmm. I, I'd rather take advice from you than me try to give you some advice. That's what a lot of people are saying, but the other side of it, too, and I have to, I have to give it, is that Peyton doing it his way, there's only one ring on his hand. That's it. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I think that Peyton Manning, certainly at age 39... One is better than none. We should not be teaching him new tricks. <laughs> one is better than none. That is true. <laughs> that you is true. You can teach an old dog a new trick if he's willing to learn. But the way the NFL is designed right now, you can't teach him. He knows all the tricks. Mm -hmm. You just got to get the right personnel and the right things in place to where he can, you know, do work his magic. That's what he do. Here with Snoop uh, on The Rich Eisen Show. You ever meet Belichick? Ever... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went to a couple of Super Bowls. You know, Willie Mack... Oh, sure. I met Mr. Kraft, Belichick, 
bro, I got pictures of them in my studio where we hung out the day before the Super Bowl, where mm -hmm. they able enabled my team, my little league team, mm -hmm. to come to the practice, no take kidding. pictures with all of the players. Yeah. So you, have you chopped it up X's and O's with with with, Man, with Belichick? I performed at the Patriots Super Bowl parties, mm -hmm. but me and the coach ain't never broke down no X's and O's. Now me and Pete Carroll, we do that all the time. Is that right? Yeah, that's my guy. Well, um, the USC connection. Yeah, we connected from SC and then in Seattle. He did the same thing with my team. He let my team come see the fellas before the Super Bowl the day before, and he gave them a big speech and brought all the team around him and said, hey, all you guys play Little League like these guys, and they dream to be like you. It was a great day. What's that coaching clinic like, you sitting there talking X's and O's with Pete Carroll? What's that like? Guru. Like a student being in the presence of a teacher who knows everything, the ins and out, uh, and I'm an offensive coordinator, so, you know, that's what I love. I love that side of the ball, and Pete's a defensive specialist, yep. so if I can get in his head, it makes me better as an offensive coordinator to know the things that defensive coordinators think of. What do you think Cam Chancellor's dealing with walking back in that locker room right now? In oh, Seattle? man, there's probably a party up in there right now. You know, I spoke to him when he came back. That's my nephew, too. Okay. And, you know, that was a great move for him to come back because, you know, handle your business later. The team needs you right now, and that's what's necessary to get out there and play ball. And, you know, once you do what you do, they got to give you what you are. And I'd love to see, you know, I picked Seattle back in the Super Bowl. I think I think they're the, when it's all said and done, it's going to be tough to beat them. But them being 0-2 in Arizona, being 2-0, that might be a tough, tough road. They're going to have to go them. on the road this year. They are. I think that, they that's, are. That's going to build them as real champions. If you can win it on the road... Yeah. Because the way they went to pass two years has right. been comfort zone. You got to come through Seattle, the 12th man. Right. Now you're going to have to get on the road and see what y'all really made of. Well, if Carson Hall stands up, as you said. He going to stand up. And the Rams stood up. Yeah. They fought. They did. And they're, uh, th that front seven's no joke, They too. mean. Aaron Donald may be the defensive player of the year when it's all said. You think so? It's when it's all said, he's that good. He's Jeff, J.J. Watt good. Jay Fish, J Jeff Fisher said he, he's the best player he's ever had at the position. And, you know, he's had Hainsworth. He's you know, J.J. Watt good. Yeah, he, I, that's what everybody believes. We'll see, though. I mean, they, they, you know, they've, they've got a big game against your Steelers this weekend. They in trouble this week. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that off the top. They in trouble. Hey, this has been a fun chat. Will you come back, please? Man, come on. I live right down the street. They got to it but to do it. Now, you said before we before we came on the air, as you sat down, you saw we were had our, our friends of Rich pick three leagues. I need in. Cut me in or cut it out? Can you cut? You Because we'll cut you in right now. You'll cut be part, me in. Every week you'll give us your every lineup. Every week I give you my players and who I get out with because I'm in okay. a fantasy league right now. Okay. Give me give me your whatever charity off air and then we'll, you'll Snoop play for your football league. There you go. That's your charity. We we'll do that on air. One, we do that on air. <laughs> okay. And then, you know, for, we'll we'll give you a certain amount of points. What do we do? The last place team, the last, that's what we did for Eric Stone Street. Yeah, we came in last Eric week, Stone right? Street of uh, How many points he got, like? 50. Well, he, the reason he's, he's just behind me and some it's, second to last. Because it's a season long prize, too. We don't want you to start from scratch for that when you're just three weeks. I like being the last because I'm going to climb. I'm going to climb my way to the tippy. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Snoop Dogg is now in the draft yes, com, Friends of Rich Lee. Here I come, baby. Here, Here I come. come. Thanks for coming in. Grandma, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> <laughs> and for the TV audience, we're about to have Snoop diagram his favorite play. We're going to do that for the TV audience. You go to richeisenshow.com for the video of that later on. But for the moment, we take a break and back up to wrap up this Thursday show in a moment. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.